Sup everybody, my name's Crytek and Bomb, and we're back here again. Another year is here on Genshin Impact. <laughs> here we are. Another day, another past period, but now we are in another year. Guess what? We are in Fontaine! Look at it. It's beautiful. Last year, we were in Sumeru. And at that time, we didn't have much going on. But now looking back at it, you can see that we are now having that other expansion. Just like that, things have changed a lot in that time. Right now, we are in past 4.4. This is because of a leap year, because I thought we would be in 4.5, but we are in the path period of Lance, right? We got the new costume for Ganyu, mm -hmm. and now it's a count review day. The patch is about to end a few days, and as stuff closes out, we have a lot of things to talk about. What can I truly say? about this special day compared to last year when my last year was some of the craziest stuff I have ever experienced like my last year from my first year going into my second year was whatever but my second year going to my third year being compared to I don't know man like when I got my second year video and you just see these amazing summons I've had. I don't know how I even thought to myself, maybe I could one-up it, which I had to check my old video just to check that. But, what the heck? Now we're in Fontaine, new region, and a lot of things have changed. Even though I feel like last year was still much better than this year, I can't necessarily say it was that much better, okay? We got something good to show you. That random single temple, or not single temple, single summon I did, which was kind of ridiculous. I had that in a video. But here, we're on a guarantee, and I'm zero pity on this one. There we go. Here we are again on a 50-50 going for Miss Kokomi. 78. 6 50-50 wins, 5 50-50 losses. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I got fish girl. I got a healer. I can't have one in for a while. She's on my fish list, so I got her. Five star early. game give me here? I'm curious. <laughs> Let's go! Eight losses. What did we get here, huh? Ooh, okay. We lost a 50-50, that's fine. That's fine. I don't have deal. And there it is. That we can get you. Getting this seasons is actually a godsend. It's very nice. All right, Kaya. It's been a hot minute, but we're finally here. It's time to finally say hello to Melt Kaya. Lies him in overworld with this build. It feels way too good, even. So, with that, you are going to be my second ever triple crown on 
my account. And I have zero regrets for it. Like, for real. I just, I cannot believe this build is top three in the world for free now. I don't know if it'll stay like this, but that is amazing. Alright, editing this in the post of things since I failed to convey it. We got a bit of a different structure this year. This time, I'm going to do showcase of characters I pulled for throughout the year, whatever, like I just didn't answer. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to show artifacts, maybe a little bit of weapons if anything changed, and then the builds of characters that impacted me on my account greatly. So, with that, let's continue. And we got character archive to show. Now, we got all these characters here, and some amazing things happen. We finally got all the standard banner characters of the original kind before Tainari and Dia's debut. Alright, I'm going to structure this a bit different from last year. You know, outside of the character that we pulled for, which is about four of them that we got. Down here, these are the new characters that have appeared since Fontaine started. And essentially, outside of that, I'm just gonna show here what characters I plan to pull for in the future and see if they appear during next year's. It'd be cool to just do this kind of thing. I didn't do that last year. The last standard unit that I need is Tainari, so, you know, by default, he is a character I want. Nuvolet, I do want him. He's the Udex of Fontaine. He is a judge. He played an integral part in the Archon story. I like him. I do like this character, but I don't plan to pull for him. Maybe on my second account, though. I do really like his design, after all. Navia, a character I, I really liked, and I was worried when she was Geo when I saw her in the trailer for the <laughs> for Fontaine. I was so worried, because when she showed her vision, I was like, oh no, what are they going to do to her? But thankfully, she's not too, you know, held back by her, you know, vision. She's actually pretty good. Lenny, I don't plan to pull for, but, you know, I like the fact that the introduction for the Tevat chapter did show him and Lynette, so I thought that was quite something. So I was looking forward to seeing what magic would go about. Wander is a character I plan to pull for, outside of, like, all the other characters that I show for Fontaine. That, like, structurally, is a character I do plan to pull for in the future, because I don't have an ammo DPS, just like Navia is a Geo DPS. And recently I decided I should probably get Yaimiko one day. She's changed a lot since her release, and when she first released, I didn't want her, but now I do want her. I don't know if I'll be able to get her, but I'm just going to put this here as just to show that I do want her. Shen Yun is the most recent character that has released as a new character during, like, the Lanternite patch. She's, uh, Cloud Retainer, the bird... <laughs> and then now turn into a full-fledged human fleshed woman with talons for fingers, but she is uh, very, very, very beautiful. Like, oh my goodness, I want her so bad. She's actually my most wanted after another character I plan to pull for very soon. Weapon section. Now, this is unfortunate, as if we compare to last year here, Nothing much changed, except for maybe uh, a second staff of Homa that I don't know what to do with, but hey, I got a second staff of Homa. We got Skyward Pride, yeah, and we got a Light of Fuller Incision. This is pretty nice. I forgot how much different the inventory was from last year that I didn't notice during the recording that even this changed so much that I just completely forgot about this weapon as well. The Primal J Wing and Spear. We got this pretty recently off the actual standard wish as well. This was a weapon I wanted two years ago though. It's a too little too late kind of situation given that when the moment I got the Staff of Scarlet Sands just before my second year of Genshin, it just kind of invalidated this weapon. 
because there's only a lot of nice reasons to use this over something that is just essentially better stat stick and both have good passives and whatnot. Also given that the second staff of Homa, even though it is being used on Mozaria, isn't something I plan to keep on her, so this weapon is also available for anyone in the future. With the new weapons I've gotten, I have gotten four new actual five star weapons since last year. Uh, the missing enhancement, or if you even care about that. Now, artifacts. Recently, we had a past period where we got this new auto locking system, which is pretty cool. We also had, back in patch 4.3, we had a new system for a new look for upgrading artifacts, so now it doesn't look the same as it once did throughout last year. But my second year, going into my third year now, we're gonna have a different way of showing things here. Because before last year, if you wanna go see it, by the way, go to my homepage, click on my name, and just scroll down and you'll see a playlist. And it will say yearly Genshin Impact review of my account. I'm gonna start putting every yearly one there so that people can find it if you want to actually see it those videos were longer than this one i hope this one's not as long but i'm just putting that here because now on i'm going to start putting out a different way of showing my artifacts that have influenced me throughout my account i would show the coolest stuff that i have right but no we're not gonna do that here i had done that through two different years now so if you want to see that, you can go to those other videos and see what else I showed. Holy diapola, I'm sorry for that. But anyways, straight to the point. Here what I'm going to do, I'm going to show a compilation of my artifacts. I got this here. Because I have way too many to show, essentially since I failed to say that, I have too many artifacts to show. I had gotten a lot of good artifacts to show. Last year was a lot of good wishes that were very lucky for me. This year was artifacts. I got a lot of good artifacts. All the clips I've, you know, made throughout last year leading up to this year, now that I'm in my third year, is going to be put into a compilation for your viewing pleasure. So, with that, let's see it. <gasps> this is like my first Twitch stream. Please let this roll well. Please! Please! Yes! Go, 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 go. Yes! Double crit pyro goblet and we got something unique here. It gave me the first subset of crit damage. Then what oh! the fuck is that? In the beginning. Another strong box. These nuts. Yes, let's go. Okay. This one is definitely <laughs> Woo! That is awesome! Here's this, I'll show you. I've gotten some other good pieces along the way throughout the week back that happened to be Electro Damage Bonus. And that piece surprised me! 
official got another artifact. That is beautiful! So, yeah, after making that clip I tossed a piece, but this really delighted me. Damn! The, the last clip of- Stop the cap! <laughs> now this is very interesting. Just freaking beautiful. My first 40 CB piece from this domain. Back. What? It has max rolls. You know what? Please sweep me off my feet. Please. Right. Woo! Yeah, baby, that's what I'm waiting for. Oh, no, this. Dude, how the heck? Except that's aren't great, but just seeing Pyro Daily Punish drop makes me happy. I would love to try to see if this rolls well. I have zero hope for this piece, let's be honest. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with the mindset I'm gonna just do this. <laughs> Wait, this could be the piece, the piece that I've dreamt of, the piece that I've waited for all this time. Can this be the one? Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yes! Finally! Finally! A double crit! Pyro Goblet! Four rolls crit! 15 crit rate with a crit damage roll. It's been three years, dude. Three years, dude. Finally, a double crit pyro goblin. I need this to roll well. I really need this artifact. I really need this artifact. this so bad and yes a 10 20 pyro goblin after the last one we just had very recently strong box hits again it's on set so this is a strong piece huh huh i'm gonna have to clip this excuse me i'll try it is going on now characters I'll be honest with you I struggled to figure out how I want to do this Ganyu got a new outfit so I'm like okay I should just give her a little bit of plug in just because she got this cute little outfit going on her and Shenha got a new outfit this year so hey it's cool for Lancer right which by the way Lancer right was amazing I really did like this Lancer, right? Some people didn't like it compared to last year. But comparing Hotel Rap to this, come on, man. I don't know. 
this slant chart was cool because we got a new little area of Chenyu Vale, which looked really nice. I really liked it, but here we go. We got a list of characters here to show, and I'm only going to show the units that influenced me throughout this year and things that I've changed that I've shown last year, and some that really, really, really surprised me. Go and get started with you. Thanks to the amazing artifacts I had throughout the beginning of my second year, going into my third year, I am pretty damn grateful, and I actually plan to farm Crimson Witch again. Yeah, I'm doing that. But, yeah, his ratio change thanks <laughs> to that EM Sans I got. If you checked last year, you would know what actually really changed, but hey, here we go. 71, 73. Got Gravestone. It took a lot of effort because I have a really good variant build with Rain Slasher. Heck, even Serpent Spawn, but Serpent Spawn just doesn't beat my Gravestone now, which is nice, even though it's R5. There's neat scenarios where it's better, but Rain Slasher was always stronger than my Gravestone for the longest time. And now, it's worth using. I like that. He has changed quite a lot since last year because of that amazing artifact. <laughs> this year for artifacts was amazing. And I can't even stress enough that we've had the most incredible luck that I could have asked for for artifacts compared to last year in terms of like, you know, actual banner summons. Which, to be honest, I did not expect to get this lucky, but I was praying for a Pyro Goblin. So, you. I'll be honest. I don't want to show her because I do not use her that much, just like I don't use Duke as much because I really want Shen Yun now even more than before. But that's for different reasons. Either way, this is her build. She's changed a lot, and I mean a lot. I have like seven different builds for her so yeah her build has changed a lot but here this is what she currently has on yeah yeah you might as well show you because the other pyro girl we got recently she is very 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 strong and even the akasha system also acknowledges it by the way if you don't know what the Akasha system is, it is a website that you go on that people in the community have created that, you know, is a place that measures artifact strength and puts it into a leaderboard system for every player that is put into the system off of another website that is called Anka Network, which, you know, just keeps tabs on your builds or whatever is on your actual character profile if you have it publicized. So... It's very, very cool to see that through the leaderboard system, you can see how good your character builds are. So, yeah, we got the catch. We got 69, 144, mm -hmm, 276 EM. We got this piece that's cracked on her, this feather that's cracked on her, this sands that's amazing on her, this goblet. Oh my god. But. I don't know if I want to keep her on it, because I do want to get rid of this and give this to somebody else, essentially, one day, if it ever comes to it. But, you know, I do have this still here, you know, whenever. But, yeah. And then, lastly, this. And yeah, that's my shotgun build. Nothing too crazy to talk about, you know. The actual C6, and then, we could show you real quick. You're more of, like, an honorable mention, because I'm showing you here for one reason. Got your outfit. Managed to get her C1 off the standard banner only. She appeared twice in a row. She is a 810. She was very close to me wanting the triple crown, but I said to myself, until I get a better build, will I actually do that? Right now, she's on this build ratio. Got a miss splitter. And she's on four piece thundering fury. The problem is, I'm not satisfied with this build. I have other build variants that are a lot cooler, but now that Kutching actually has an Akasha leaderboard, I want to see how far I can really push her. I never actually farmed the Thunder Fury domain long enough. I got these artifacts within about a week or two of farming the domain. I got very lucky with it, 
the sands that I got was actually from Strombugs. The star of the show, Al Haytham. My boy, my baby, baby boy. He is the closest to being my main. He is also my second triple crowned. He's very, very well built. I have very, very strong builds. He is C0 Artifacts is a very unique skill set as I might have to make a video on this. I don't see a lot of people talking about it enough. But when he reruns, maybe I'll talk about it more because this needs to be talked about. Two-piece Golden Troop, two-piece CM. It is very strong on him. I actually advocate towards this more than four-piece Gilded as it is by far, from me testing my account, his strongest build. And I have a really good four-piece Gilded build. So that's saying something. But here we go. 86 239. If I change a couple things, I could have 260 crit damage with 70 plus crit rate. We got one of the strongest out items you'll ever see. I'm pretty proud of it, as you can see. He is definitely the closest to my main. Got the goblet, the sands, my strongest artifact on my account by far. 51 CV artifact. It is just very strong. And this piece is contributing a lot, which is very nice for the EM crit value. And then my best crit rate circle on my account, I still haven't managed to one up this. I would love to improve this one day, but A, still haven't been able to, I guess. I don't know what to say to that, but yeah, I really like this build. It is by far my strongest build, and he's by far my strongest character so far. But we'll see how long that lasts. I had to switch to my two-piece, two-piece EM, which I had used for a long while before I swapped the two-piece golden troop in this two-piece EM setup. But I had to do it. There it is. Look at how good that looks. Very beautiful. But from my experience, even though I also can do this with golden troop with high crit damage and 70 plus crit rate, it just didn't really feel stronger. I guess it's just that intricacy of how much I'm critting versus how much crit could actually be big in the grand scheme of things. It's still very strong. I do hit really high numbers in it. I've hit over 60k on Al Haytham without a C2 Nahida, so that's saying something. I'll show the Cabbage Pass kit as well. Why not? So, she's changed a lot. Um, Pieces that are on my Alhatham were taken from my Nahida, which, uh, man, does she have a high cost of leaderboard for her as well, but that's beside the point. A lot of the characters are very high in their cost, so if I actually really went to look for it, but that's beside the point. Either way, here we got Nahida, 600 EM. She's built a certain way, okay? She's got 77 crit rate, 149 crit damage. Another crit damage weapon. Artifacts is a very unique skill set as this artifact set here is uh, unique for her. You don't have to put four piece deep wood on her. You can put four piece deep wood on somebody else and boom, there you go. You got a set going for her as a DPS if you want to kind of do that because before you could do four piece gilded, but now you don't have to do that. You got an EM Goblin. EM Sins, which isn't crazy. It still is fine and functioning and strong. Before she had this Sins on though. Got this Feather. And we got this amazing flower. It's doing God's work. And of course the Circlet. Talents is 10 on the skill. Not on the burst. Yeah. Last character I'm going to show. Here we got Farina. She is... By far, my most impressive build that I have on the Akasha website, and it still boggles my brain that all I did was just move some pizza around and just try stuff out while I've been farming the Golden Tube domain for as well as I have, and got this ratio. And who would have thought this ratio would put me top three in the world? 
amongst 7,000 plus other users at this time of uploading. This is probably going to change because in past 4.6, she's going to rerun. So yeah, got artifacts, crit damage circlet, HP goblin, ER sands, feather, flower, yeah, the usual stick. Constellation zero for now, but I'm just gonna say this here and I quote this. I'm going to come back to this next year. I'm going to come back to this the year after that. My plan is to time well. One day, I am going to get every constellation of this character as she had the most worth it C6 in the game. Even though it's overkill, it is the first character C6 that is something that feels worth getting for me to save up for and get. This is because I frankly don't have a lot of characters I want to pull for. I do not pull characters based on design only. They have to do something unique, something special, something different, something that screams like, this is going to be really fun to play in the long term. I cannot pick a character only on design. If I do that, I could feel really bad about that moving forward. For other characters, even though I don't have regrets for some of them, there is some of them I just frankly just don't even use anymore. And case in point, my C1 Hotel. I don't really use her that much. I only use any Abyss. That's about it. I don't use her that much. So, with that in mind, and the double crown with the nine, yeah. But yeah, this was my account. We're just a few days away. These are the current banners we got going on. And I got a lot of wishes saved up, something I don't usually have around this time, because I usually pull around Lance Rider just before it. But hey, we got full saved up. Because I have someone I'm pulling for very soon. <laughs> but with that in mind, the artifact luck this year was just amazing leading up to my third year of Genshin Impact. I don't think it equalizes on the luck I had throughout the double five stars I had, but it was still amazing because I really checked a lot of boxes throughout last year going into this year. Next year, I wonder what's going to happen in Nation and Natlin, huh? We had a lot of things happen, and Fonte's not even finished yet. We still have another area. Who knows where that's going to be at. But 4.6 is coming about, so there's going to be another area of Fontaine left, and there's still exploration in this region to be finished. And we did have that area that I hoped that would happen eventually. We had its Changyu Vale. Now, if we could only... You know, get that dandelion C next year. If it happens, I'm just gonna put this here. My last year, when we were in Sumeru for Genshin Impact, we had a unique time. You know, talking about the Archon story and how much that was, you know, influencing me, and I said it was my favorite region. Eventually, my mind made up that Sumeru was my favorite region. It was my favorite region for exploration for sure, and I really enjoyed the story. But now, now that we're in Fontaine, I mean, the exploration here is pretty fun. We had some underwater exploration, which is very unique to some degree in this game, and it's pretty cool and atmospheric. Hopefully, the next sub region that we get, or last part of Fontaine that comes out, will show us how amazing it is moving out of Fontaine. But for the actual story that we've had in here, it's uh amazing. This story blew Sumeru out the water for me. Like the storytelling for this story was so amazing. It was like something out of some other story or something, right? And it was really cool. It felt like as if I was in, in this universe as an anime, yeah. It really felt like a series that was going about in an arc, if you will, but obviously this is just another chapter in the Tavat chapter of Genshin Impact, so of course, <laughs> but it really was a wild ride, and some of the moments that we've had was some of the most amazing. The Trevor got the spoke a lot more often than usual, and 
we met the Archon that had more of a twisted, different side that was, you know, maybe annoying to others, but I thought it was very unique of her personality. And the region itself is, you know, of course, beautiful. So that hasn't changed anything for me as well. But all of this to say, compared to Sumeru, I had hopes for this region in a way to say that this could compete with that for me, and it did. It definitely did. It's definitely, right now, my favorite region for the story, and it was very much amazing. Exploration is a very, very, very close second, but to some people I can understand if you didn't enjoy that as much, the exploration of Sumeru, so it's understandable. But for me, it was just a wonderful experience seeing something that was just vastly different from other parts of the game, so that's how I knew Sumeru and the exploration of it. But for Fontaine, the story was so amazing that I cannot deny that it was definitely my favorite region by far for that. And all I can say is that thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys and for me that I don't know how long the video is going to be but it seems like my yet just would not you know calm down <laughs> to a point that I, I feel like there's still things I want to say but if I say them the video is going to get longer and then I'm going to have more of an issue with how long the video is because I don't know how much people are going to watch it and I'm a bit worried about that already as is on one hand I do think it was pretty fun time explaining everything and even getting my words out that I wanted but I really 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 do just love the thing that I wanted to create looking forward to this year because I was looking forward to Fontaine but who would have thought things would have turned out the way that it did I was so nervous making this video just because I wanted to see how much I could really one up from last year's but now, I, I just kind of came to an understanding that it, it's fine. Just being able to show what happened from last year for me, leading up to today, the start of a new chapter has begun. And with that, I bid you farewell. But, Without saying the last things, of course, make sure to nuke the like button, subscribe if you haven't to the channel. Please, by all means, if you're interested in anything Genshin Impact related, whenever I do them, since I document my progress in live streaming it, so every single pass that appears, I hope you guys can come and check me out. It's time to move on and see what goes on next time. We will be in that land.